Disney Marvel Presents Marvel Studios Production Disney Plus Exclusive Miniseries Miss Marvel is the most insulting thing I've seen since the texture work in Legends Arceus. It tells the story of Kamala Khan, a privileged American teenager dealing with privileged first world teenager problems. The opening episode boasts the runtime of 40 minutes, and yet there's barely enough story material to fill a B-plot of your average sitcom episode. If there's one thing the creators pumping out these garbage tier Disney Plus shows have learned, it's how to waste the audience's time. They got six episodes to fill, so the obvious thing to do is to make the plot move in circles, have the characters talking about nothing, and generally skip the part where you tighten up your script, also known as redrafting. Anything you barf onto the page, it ends up on the screen. So what is the story actually about? Well, Kamala happens to be a huge fangirl of superheroes. She especially fawns over Captain Cunt, I, I mean Captain Resting Bitch Face, I, uh, I mean Captain Wine Aunt, I, uh, I mean Captain Brie Larson. You know that one woman who in the MCU timeline has spent somewhere around three whole days on Earth as a superhero? The hero in scare quotes by the by. Oh but she was so cool when she helped in Endgame by getting her shit pushed in by Thanos. Objectively the best part of the movie agreed. Kamala spends her days obsessing, fantasizing, making YouTube videos about her favorite topic. Her fixation reaches the point where the school and her parents are starting to be seriously concerned with her. She really idolizes this person whom she's never even met and knows absolutely nothing about. Such healthy teenage behavior. But that's all just her being quirky and different and special. No, no, the other kind of special. Though she did manage to flunk her driver's test by backing into a car on an otherwise unobstructed street, so we know she can't tell the difference between the first gear and reverse. I'm no licensed doctor, but something tells me things ain't exactly pristine up in the old thinking lobe of hers. All in all, Kamala falls neatly into one of the two categories of modern day leading ladies. The first being the insufferable act like a douche because that's powerful girl boss type. And the second being the hyperactive chapper machine possibly artsy type. These are the only brands of female pro tags anyone seems to be capable of producing in this day and age. More specifically, Kamala falls into the latter type. And there's nothing inherently wrong with the happy-go-lucky energetic girl trope. I for one much prefer it to the types who are constantly bitchy for no reason. If only the author would take care to craft the characterization properly. The problem with the style of writing Kamala embodies is that she is utterly fake. She never says anything meaningful, she's not insightful, nor funny, nor likable, it's all just noise. There's a clear desperation to make her so gosh darn precious and awkward in a cute way and hey look at me I'm so relatable. And none of it comes off as genuine. Then at 8 p.m. the real reason we're here, the reason I learned to sew and you learned to airbrush the cosplay competition. I win, obviously. Collect my crown, I'm assuming it's made of real diamonds. It's definitely not. No one talks like this. No one says things like this. She's like a fucking cartoon slash anime character made flesh, without the unapologetic zeal to back it up. This dialogue is absolute rubbish. Everything she says, everything she does, her entire existence is obnoxious. It's all just quirky for the sake of quirky. She's being sorta awkward, because every girl in school who isn't literally the queen bee has to be awkward. Because that's relatable. Except she's the type who is actually really outgoing and socially confident, whenever the script feels like it. So the random spurts of awkwardness in school and such just fall flat. 
it's impossible to see her as an actual character, but rather a manufactured Disney Channel teenage pro tag of the day. The show desperately tries to inject Kamala and the show as a whole with personality by having the doodles Kamala likes to do pop up and bleed into the world here and there. Instead of timestamps, we get time doodles. Instead of montages as normal, we get whatever the hell this is. The hello there fellow kids energy is palpable. There's nothing charming about these sequences. It's corporate, sterile, lacking any kind of true vision or unique charm, anything that would convince me that these are actually made by Kamala Khan, and it makes me wanna puke whenever it pops up. A character being quote artsy does not equate compelling characterization. They are drawings, so fucking what? The candy colors and silly doodles won't cover the fact that the protag has all the dimensions of Captain Marvel's fart box, and the exact same amount of brain cells. Honestly, it's annoying if anything that the author thinks that a character's hobby in a goddamn superhero story should constitute half of her personality. One would think there are other avenues of humanity to explore, other more pressing passions to showcase. Kamala's obsession with superheroes is just that. Obsession. Shallow, hedonistic, and frankly disgusting. She dreams that she too could one day be gifted with powers. Not because she feels there's injustice in the world, not because she feels weak and unable to protect the people she loves. No, no, she wants to bask in the limelight of society, to be special, adored, praised for merely existing. And, and let's be honest, it's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. As if that has any modicum of bearing on anything. Is Jersey in trouble? Is there a need for a local superhero in Jersey? As far as the show lets us believe, there really isn't. It would be so simple to showcase crime happening, people getting hurt, anything of the sort. Something that would humanize Kamala and make her dreams be anything more than selfish indulgence of La La Land. For fuck's sake, have her save a cat from being run over by a car or something. Show that she would be the kind of person who would eventually deserve powers. That she would use them to do some good in her community. This is not hard, it's basic stuff to establish mood and themes. But all of this is disregarded in favor of more pressing human drama, like not being allowed to go to a superhero convention, please kill me, while dressed as Captain Marvel because her parents think the costume is too skimpy. You're not going to dress up like all those other girls in skimpy outfits. This, this is skimpy. Put a rack over your head, you look like a whore. Now see, this girl has the right idea. What is any of this? I mean, I would understand it if the costume was more along the lines of this. But that's not the only fart of logic in the episode. Oh, far from it. There scarcely goes by a minute without something sanity-breakingly stupid being uttered or happening. A more pedantic person might do a multi-hour video series breaking down every second of it. But I don't know anyone like that. I certainly have enough work as it is. To give you a taste of what I'm talking about, Kamala's family gets a package of junk from the granny, among them a mysterious bracelet. Kamala's mom immediately recognizes the trinket and confiscates it. Clearly, it's something dangerous, better left alone, certainly not something that a teenage dumbass should ever get her hands on. So where does the mother hide it? At the attic. In the same box it came in. Not hidden, not behind a lock, just left there up for grabs. <laughs> the story needs to happen, so we are gonna make it happen, damn it! Anyway, despite her parents' wishes, Kamala sneaks out to attend the convention so that she can flaunt her absolutely breathtakingly basic Captain Marvel costume. 
Along for this scandalous mischief is her bestest buddy Bruno, whose friendly duties consist of acting as Kamala's hype man and a devoted secret, not so secret admirer. You're Kamala Khan. You want to save the world? Then you're gonna save them all. His personality begins and ends on the fact that he is Kamala's friend. I guess that's some kind of payback for all the one-dimensional wives and girlfriends Hollywood has produced over the years. Fair enough. A bit callous and childish. Some might say tantrum-esque. But you may do as you wish. So at the convention, Kamala enters a cosplay competition entirely dedicated to Captain Marvel. A Miss Marvel competition, if you will. And being the special individual that she is, she slaps on the mystical bracelet, gets an ominous vision seizure, and then marches onto the stage covered in magical aura. She then is surprised that a cosplay event has garish lights and people photographing her, so she passes out, unleashing her mystic powers. These blotches of energy. How exciting! She accidentally causes chaos, cutting the head of an Ant-Man statue, which goes all Indiana Jones all across the festivities. Seriously, what the fuck is this thing made of? The spontaneous Rube Goldberg machine sets off a roided up replica of Mjolnir, which, gasp, careers straight for Kamala and her fellow contestant. Now here's a perfect opportunity for Kamala to show the whole world and we the audience just what kind of hero she is. She's gonna tackle the lass out of the way of the runaway hammer, right? Well, think hard. Really. Truly put those brain cells to work. Make yourself earn the dopamine today. What does Kamala do? She hits the deck herself and tells the other girl to watch out. Of course. She could have just grabbed her and pulled her to safety in the same amount of time it took her to save herself. But that's the way the Jalibi crumbles with modern... heroes. There's no way to take any of this seriously. The physics are so cartoony it's embarrassing. The hammer has at once enough mass and velocity to sweep the girl off her feet, carry her across the room, and slam her against the wall. Yet at the same time it somehow doesn't just turn her ribcage into sand. Right. Oh, but would you look at that. Kamala saves her as she plummets to the ground by grabbing her some inches off the ground. So basically she did nothing. Landing from that height on her bum would have been uncomfortable, sure. But if the hammer didn't do her in, then neither would this. Kamala accomplished nothing. Fleeing the scene like the responsible superpowered being that she is, Kamala arrives home, only to find her mother waiting for her. Oh snap! She's in for it now! She's gonna get an earful of disappointment and scolding, and she's gonna feel bad for being so irresponsible and reckless and selfish and making offers worry and almost killing a room full of people and none of that hits home. No, I'm serious. The mother does her little speech, and Kamala just takes it like whatever. She is not distraught, she regrets nothing, she isn't worried how this evening will affect her relationship to her family. Because fuck it, she has superpowers now, ain't life grand. As an added insult to injury, the show attempts to present the standard coming of age theme. Stop daydreaming, take responsibility, figure out what kind of person you wish to be. The problem is that this idea is presented as superficial lip service and never actually comes into play. Kamala will never take responsibility over anything. She is perfect the way she is, she gets handed superpowers like she always wanted, and the first thing she does is hide from responsibility. She has revealed her innermost soul. And mark my words, this is not a setup for character development down the line. No one should delude themselves into thinking that. This is modern Marvel we are talking about. Hedonism, validation, and you go girl are the name of the game. 
Kamala's dreams have come true, and that's great. And that's empowering, because everyone should be entitled to feel special without putting in any work. Modern writing is allergic to merit. The standards of female heroes in media have been on the decline since forever now. But as far as I see it, Kamala Khan is one of the most blatant examples of the absolute state we are in as a culture. This is a slap in the face by the creative minds at Disney and Marvel. They do not care about anything anymore. They have no clue about what is the appeal of superhero stories. Worse, they do not even fathom the concept of heroism anymore. Heroes used to be the types of people who would always place others' needs over their own desires. They would risk everything they had, including their own safety and happiness, to keep the people around them safe. Heroes used to represent the best of us, the universal ideals we should all strive for, to protect others, to uphold justice, to give other people with the chance to live happy and stable lives. Some heroes were motivated by the fact that it was the obvious right thing to do. Some of them were saved by the generations that came before, inspiring them to repay that debt. Others were hurt, devastated once in their life, and they swore to never let anything close to their own suffering happen to other people. The point is, heroic tales, whether they be fantastical or down to earth, should be inspirational. When you strip away all the allegory and flashy action and the like, the message behind this kind of art is simple, yet omni-important. Heroes are people who struggle, but they get back up again, they protect their fellow men, and together help build a better world for all of us. The message should be this. Be a good person. Be a hero. Be someone worth admiring. Be the standard of moral fiber worth aspiring to. That's what these stories used to be. Now we have this. A spoiled, self-indulgent, stupid, annoying, meritless bitch. Whose only motivation is to be loved by the public. She's gonna be a hero, because being a hero is totally awesome. These types of people are only interested in the rockstar side of superheroism, not the actual moral implications of it, just like modern mainstream writers themselves. Creating shallow, harmful art, presenting us with one awful role model after the other, <laughs> No matter what garbage they produce, people keep buying it, people keep praising it, people keep clamoring for more. Heroism is dead. Disney and Marvel and every other corporate sludge factory killed it. And no, it's not a new thing. They did it a long time ago. I just felt like pointing it out, in case any of you happen to have missed it. Who is that girl I see, staring straight back at me? You're sitting lyrics from Milan. You do not get to speak that movie's name, you worthless fuck nuggets. You've already raped it once. You do not have the right to associate that classic film with this film. A plague on all your houses. I hope Kamala Rose tickles you off the road. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.